Here we are at one of Europe's most ancient cities. A city with over 3,000 years of history, which has passed through ages of extreme grandeur to years of profound decline. Naples. Piazza del Plebiscito a Napoli, dove finiva il Festival Bar. We begin at the historical center, a grid of streets weaving between buildings of diverse architectural styles, from Roman theaters and Greek buildings to Gothic churches and medieval walls. Siamo arrivati a Napoli, siamo, stiamo passeggiando per il centro storico, un centro storico che a prima impressione è bellissimo, trasuda di molta umanità. What was once a magnificent city, now sits in dilapidated charm. Litter lines the streets and graffiti covers the walls. Traffic police make clumsy attempts to relieve the congestion. But, new forms of art are emerging from the vandalism. We stumble upon interesting pieces of street art, including two which resemble Banksy. Abbiamo trovato un altro, una fitta di Alice. Despite its apparent deterioration, Naples is a thriving city, bustling with life, emanating the energy of its people. We meet with Andrea and his family. Andrea is one of the rare examples of emigration from north to south. He comes from the northeast of Italy and moved to Naples 10 years ago. Nowadays, he has totally absorbed not only the Neapolitan accent, but also its culture and values. The majority of Neapolitans share strong and unique religious beliefs. Worshipping the dead is still very important. People believe that by praying to the deceased, the deceased will watch over the living and visit them through dreams. The saints here are valued more highly than the Virgin Mary and even Jesus. Here we observe a devoted man kissing the liquefied blood of San Gennaro, patron saint of the city, whose blood supposedly liquefies 
on September the 19th, December 16th, and the first Sunday of May. Among the various saints, a particularly popular one is San Maradona, also called El Pibe de Oro. Another custom is the Smorfia, where numbers are assigned to one string, and these are then to be used to play the lottery. Let's see how it works. We leave the sunshine and descend deep into the city's underground. Going 40 meters below sea level means traveling back almost 3,000 years. The galleries were originally built by the Greeks as tough mines, a form of rock. Subsequently, as an aqueduct by the Romans, and, more recently, a shelter during the bombings from Americans in World War II. Today, they can be visited on a walking tour. Food is a passion in Naples, homely and delicious. Pasta, seafood, not forgetting their famous pizza. Siamo in una pizzeria dove hanno inventato la pizza margherita. Sei birre la pizza 12 euro. Mi sembra cheap. The city has a culinary variety that we experience to the full in restaurants, as well as being taken by our host, Christina, to her aunt's for dinner. A real treat. One cannot leave Naples without visiting the famous ruins of Pompeii. Our guide here is the professor, Giuseppe Galano, who brings Pompeii to life from the once luxurious homes of politicians to the cafes and brothels lining the streets. Look at the beautiful river stones, uh, mixed with cement. It's a white train, water, 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 water. Like a layer of color, like so people were automatically protected from uh, this lead point. The problem is that when they try.
After Pompeii, we visit Villa Oplontis, also called Villa of Pompeia, allegedly the wife of Nero. Villa di Oplontis a Torre Annunziata, una villa bellissima fuori dai percorsi turistici più, più conosciuti, bellezza e un'architettura e affreschi incredibili, però un'incuria e un degrado che non sono degni di un paese civile, che impediranno per questi beni di essere tramandati alle generazioni future, che, che è un, un peccato crimine contro l'umanità. In essence, to cite an Italian journalist, Naples is one of the most mysterious cities of Europe. Naples is a Pompeii which was never buried. This city is a world of its own.